this is the autobiography of a condemned criminal. A book brilliantly written that has appeared high on the list of bestsellers. A book that openly confesses the many crimes committed by the most notorious juvenile delinquent in recent years. A book written against a date with death in San Quentin Penitentiary, California. This is the living room of 4,000 convicts. These are the bedrooms. Men live here year in and year out, counting the days, hoping for parole. But for those inside this cell block, there is little hope. For this is death row. This is cell 2455. The date is July 29th, 1954. Fifty times I've heard that elevator take men on the last ride. And I'm next. simple will. I'm going to leave the proceeds of the book to a couple of fatherless boys and their mother. That way she won't have to work and let them run the streets. And uh, I want to be cremated. And after that, oblivion. Well, the state can have their law books back now. I hope they serve the next guy as well. You kept yourself alive with legal maneuvers for nearly six years. You certainly have had every chance the law allows. <laughs> Chances. Yeah, but they've been narrow. I've been within a few feet of that little green room four separate times. Much closer now. You've accomplished something remarkable during your six years here. You've educated yourself right here in this cell. You've studied law. You know much more about criminal law than the average lawyer. Yeah. And I'm still here. But you can't claim that you haven't had your day in court. Oh, no. no I've had that all right. You've become a well-known author. The critics have acclaimed your book. It's been read by thousands and thousands of people. Ah, the book's nothing but a story of a failure. A book that can't even answer one question. What starts a man here? What brings a man to death row? I don't think anyone will know the right answer to that question in a hundred years. I'll live a hundred years. Between now and morning. What? Why'd they have to kill me? It won't solve nothing. Look, let them keep me in jail for as long as I live. I didn't write a book to save my life. I wrote it to help thousands of others who might travel the same wretched road. I want to save them from the hell I've been through. I want to write more. Look, I know what I'm talking about. Sure, sure, I acknowledge lots of crimes, but I'm worth more alive now than dead. That's not for me to judge. <laughs> no. It's up to my fellow man. Oh, it's a slim hope now. You know, you can spend the rest of the night downstairs, play some records. No, 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 no. I'll sweat it out up here if you don't mind, Warden. After all these years, the cellar's like 
Okay, but thanks for coming up for it. I'll be seeing. Yeah, I'll see you at 9.30, Wood. What brought me here? Why am I here? Why did it happen to me? From all sides, I'm condemned. He's no good. He's a menace. Nobody is my friend. I'm a criminal. The worst kind. Why? 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 I wasn't born a criminal. I didn't spring full grown from hell. So why am I here? I had good parents. Loving parents. And they gave me more than I ever gave them. I was a sickly kid and I had asthma since I was four. Dad moved the family from Michigan to the coast for my health. I can still remember my first night at downtown Los Angeles. Dad used to take me to different street corners and we'd just stand there and watch the hundreds of people and automobiles go by. I think that's what I wished hard that someday I'd have my own automobile. Be the best driver on the road. We rented a small house and Dad had high hopes for all of us. Yep, and I guess I never will forget the first time we went to the zoo. Big Kitty, I called it. Remember, I wanted to let it go free, but Dad told me they had to keep it caged. I've never forgotten his words. Everything dangerous has to be caged. Things were going pretty good with Dad, and it wasn't long before he was able to make the first payment on a second-hand car. had happened to mom. Her spine was snapped, paralyzed from the waist down. Whit, hmm? I drew the death watch. I brought you some coffee. Thanks. Where was I? Mom's accident. A blur of memories. Five or six years of poverty. All of Dad's savings spent on surgery for Mom. But it was useless. She never walked again. Wes! Wes! Yeah, Mom? Your father. I smell gas. In the kitchen, hurry! Pa! What'd you do it for, Pa? What'd you do it for? Pa, Pa, what'd you do it for? I'm sorry, son. Then I saw those charity packages. What I saw in Pop's face that night was despair and fear, and I remember how scared I got. Scared of poverty. Scared of what it had done to us. I had to find some way to help. When the folks questioned me about the extra groceries, I told them I had a paper route, and I got away with that lie for weeks. What stage does a wayward boy turn into a delinquent? I guess you don't suddenly turn. You curve in. Joanne was 
the girl's name. I'd watch the play in the pinball machine, the mall shop, every day for about a week. Usually had a couple of fellas hanging around her, but on this day she was alone. When my boyfriends take me out, they have cars, she said. I was sure they didn't have any as good as the one I had just stolen. Your car's in good shape, Mr. Rockefeller. You ordered it, didn't you? Come on, jump in. What's the matter, little boy? Big bad policeman scare you in your stolen car? No. Where do you want to go? Right straight to the end of the line. Where? I know a shortcut. Drive fast, crazy fast. Crazy little boy. Yeah, crazy about you. Got a cigarette? Wish I had a drink. Sorry, the guy who owned this car forgot to build a bar in it. You know, I've been watching you a lot. I know. You've got pretty legs. Oh, you've noticed them. Got a pretty mouth. Well, what did we come here for? To go crazy, I guess. You said I've got a pretty mouth. Why don't you kiss it? Hey, Lucky! How do you like that? Lovers! Beat it, you guys. You too. You fellas, get out of here. You fellas, get out of here. Shame on you, Joanne. You know them? She knows us. What are you doing, Joanne? Cradle snatching? What do you think you're doing? Lay off, will you? Come on. That shows you how an expert works. Lay off him. I'll snatch your ball headed. I'll take them both on. Well, listen to Buster. Leave him alone. He's an all right guy. He's a square. Look at the car he's got. He kiped that car. Oh, so he kipes cars. Yeah, and he knows how to wheel them, too. I was going to introduce him to Skipper and the bunch at the shack. Hey, we need a guy who can collect cars and wheel them. If he's as good as Joanne says, how about a little proof? You want a fast ride? Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> The guy? This is the guy. You got a record? No, I've never been pinched. Then what makes you think you're tough enough to get in with us? I don't know how tough he is, but he can be plenty useful. You should see this guy drive. He's great. I think he's yellow. Let's see. Watch your nose, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Had a girl, Joy. All right. All right, kid. 
tell us, Skipper. So you want to prove you've got guts? Anytime you're ready. Okay, you'll get a chance. When? When I tell you. Here you go, Wit. These bullies were car thieves, shoplifters, check kiters. But they were stupid, too. I knew I had more brains than all of them put together. It was a wild run of crime for almost a year. That gun made me ten inches taller. I'm sure you're mistaken, officer. My boy is a mechanical wizard. He spends most of his time when he's not in school taking the family car apart and putting it together. Wait, somebody wants to talk to you. Don't you hear me, son? Just a minute, officer. Nobody's gonna hurt him, mister. Now drop that wrench, kid. Drop it. We're going for a little ride, sonny. Officer. This will break his mother's heart. She's a cripple, sir, bedridden. It'll be very hard You're to tell. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. It's a bad bunch of kids, mister. Stick-ups and store boosters, and they kite cars and give us a bad time. One of these days, they're gonna kill somebody. But my boy's not like that. Well, you'll have to tell it to the judge, mister. We picked up one of his pals, Skipper Adams. He racked up the rest of them, name by name. Put your kid's name at the top of the list. Quit, why don't you speak up? Tell this man it isn't true. You got nothing on me, copper. You see, mister? They pick up that kind of talk in the comics, hear it on the radio. Come on, kid. So I drew a stretch in the reform school with the others. Fingerprinted, numbered, cataloged. I was furnished with a record that stuck to me ever since. You can't handle Skip yourself. I'll soften him up for you. You can have what I leave. We've only been in this joint since this morning. You sure this is the way you want to start your career here? I'm sure. Just as soon as I can lay my hands on it. You stinking stool pigeon. Not me. And who did? Come on, names. Who punched this fella? Santa Claus. Oh, a wise guy. Is that a crime, too? Well, you're making a good start for a new arrival. How many of these boys worked you over? Just one. Him. Finger! Oh, oh, yeah. Shut up! Yeah. Take him over to the hospital. All right, come on, come on. Break it up. I warn you, Woody, if you think you're tough, we tame lions here. The tougher it gets, the better I'll like it. I conformed to nothing. I drew one punishment after another and told them what to do with our rules. Within six months, I was warned and bawled out 20 times and listed as an incorrigible. What's the matter with you? You're pounding up a record an inch thick. It'll bog you down in time. When are you going to grow up? Got them to give you a job in the office. And what happens? They use that privilege to juggle the files and put bad credits against other inmates you don't like. They had it coming. You've stolen from the commissary. You've been caught gambling, smoking in the dormitory. You're full of resentment and defiance. You're on a downhill toboggan. Into a snowbank, sir. Into the penitentiary. At least I'll steer the course myself. Don't you do me any favors. I won't. Take it the hard way. 90 days in the brickyard. on ignorant folks like you. Ten at a time. Much. Line up. Now, I know 
you got complaints about the food. A light rations and hard work is the order as long as you deserve it. It's up to you. At that moment, all the guard meant to me was another cop. Another stupid authority telling me what to do. Oh, if I'd had a gun that day, I would have emptied it into him. He needs to be fumigated. <laughs> That was my first dose of tear gas, and I've never forgotten. <coughs> I was still against authority, against society, against the law. But I vowed from that day on to yes everybody, to rub my nose in any kind of dirt, to get out. I finally got out. Older, taller, wiser. Upon arrival in town of residence, report at once to your parole officer. I've been over your record carefully, Whittier. You're going to have to walk a tight rope from now on. You slip, you fall right into San Quentin. I'd like to ask one question, sir. Hmm. Eight more waiting, huh? No, there's no time for questions. You report here once a week until I think it's okay for you to come in only once a month. Now, you've read the rules about consorting with other parolees, getting off the streets at night. Remember... No liquor, no firearms. Why can't you cut a record of that? Now, listen, boy, that's not the right attitude. I've got 70 like you that I've got to keep track of and more coming in every day. Now, I'll help you as much as you want to help yourself. I doubt that. Now, look, boy. Oh, thank you, sir. Good day, sir. to the parole, to cops, to the devil himself to strike first. The brand's on us deep and we gotta fight back. There's no Ten Commandments in this gang. Just one. Don't get caught. Squares, here we come. All I want is the long green stuff with the dead presidents on it. Stolen a shortwave radio and rigged it up to receive the police broadcasts. I always knew where I was going. The police didn't. I was in the dough. When you have dough, you have a dame. doll. She could be a doll, too. All looks and clothes and feminine cuteness. Or she could be a hard-boiled realist. I like both sides of her character and all points of her compass. Cops tailed us. Oh, are you crazy? What do you lead them up here for? I couldn't help it. They they didn't dog us till we got on this road. There ain't any other. Bust ignition on that car. Jerk the wire. Hit the brush.
time. We busted the ignition. Well, I didn't get a chance to bust the two-way radio on my car. They'll clock up this road down below. Hit it. Who's doing the driving? Mountain Road and Main Highway. All speed intercept white squad car coming from hills. San Fernando Valley, Malibu, Santa Monica. All highways. All cars. Police radio car number 34. Repeat 34. Stolen from patrol. Three men in this car. All armed. May head back into city. Repeat. You guys couldn't catch cold. <laughs> Don't come too close behind us. <laughs> Calling up Dyke, revolving Flint Ridge Circle XYZ, reverse battleship Normandy. I tossed him into using code. Patricia, <laughs> effective Flint Ridge Malibu. Repeat. They must carry a rabbit's foot. The only priest. But the rabbit's foot wasn't good enough to keep me out of San Quentin. That was my first trip in. Let me see. It was in August, 41. The minimum sentence totaled 26 years. The maximum could be five lifetimes. Attention, all man, attention. Warden Duffy will speak to you. Warden Duffy? Hear this, please. I've got some big news for every man in this prison. The state of California has just completed and put into working order an honor farm. You can regain your dignity as men. The aim is rehabilitation and a parole for you as soon as you're entitled to it. The name of this place is Chino. Hmm. Business is picking up. There'll be no bars and no walls. The only thing that will bind you to Chino is your own word of honor until the authorities believe you're ready to go free. This is your chance, men. Good behavior will get you there. That is all. You could grow gracefully in a place like Chino. Live among the flowers, the birds, and the bees. <laughs> yeah. I don't intend to grow old in any joint. Hey, Al, uh, you gonna stay around L.A. when your parole comes through? Right close. I'm gonna give you a telephone number. Dame. Good looking? Yeah, she's all mine. Remember that. You'll come along the minute I make Chino. Unless you get yourself jammed up again. Ah, uh, not a chance this time. I've learned how to be careful. I'll stay out of trouble till I shake this joint at least. Let me know the day you get to Chino. I'll be your outside contact. If I don't have a long gray beard and an ear trumpet by that time. <laughs> well, make it before you're on the streets a year. This stir's never seen the kind of good con I'm gonna be. I have so many credit marks, they wanna make me the chaplain. <laughs>
were towers used by the plane spotting details. They were quite a distance from headquarters. I promised myself I'd be up in one of those things in less than a year. Chino looked like a sugar-covered birthday cake to me. In a way, it was a birthday present. I had just reached 24. It took a long, long time before my smartness paid off. Regular airliner, 10.30. No, <laughs> it didn't drop no bombs. We are lucky being here with, aren't we? Luckier when we get out. Uh, I don't know that I want to get out. Beds are good, meals are good. It's comfortable here. No, I don't like it out on the street. I've tried the old world. And the world's all right if you use it, make it pay off. Grab it by the throat, shake it, slap it in the face a couple of times, turn it upside down, out rolls your bread and butter. Maybe a little cake. It's a cinch. If you're lucky. Uh, I make my own luck. Yeah, but crime don't pay. Pays off 87% of the smart cookies and never end up in jail. 87%, is that bad? Bad for the other 13%. That includes us. We're here. You belong here, boy. You're happy. Don't wake up. You're expecting that dame again, aren't you? Yeah. Dames is grief. Not for me. They've been my best friends. I was married once. The trouble a lousy two dollars can get you into. There she is, right on time. I just picked up a light over in a brush. I knew you were up to it. I knew it. Well, tonight I'm strictly rabid. It's jump and run. With. Give it a good long thought. You're here on your honor. Not me. I haven't got any. All I need is an hour. Going over the fence? Through it. I borrowed a pair of wire cutters last week. My little blood. You tell him I fell through the trap door and cut my head. Whit, don't do this. You're going to make it tough on the rest of us. Go along with me on this hour's delay, aren't you? If you don't, I'll square you the day you get out. It's your party. And now you call a switchboard. Tell him I fell through the trap. Cut my head. Started for the hospital. Tell him you want to know how I'm coming along. They say I haven't arrived yet. You tell him I must be wandering around dazed. Get it? You're dazed, all right. Tomorrow you can have my piece of pie. So long. I got it. Greybeard. <laughs> Meet the monk, my good left arm. Straight as they come. Hi, a farmer. Hi, monk. Everything okay? Any changes? Just like we said, it's straight for town. Let's go wheel it. Wheel it? I suddenly lost my taste for Chino. They haven't done away with traffic cops since you've been in. Yeah, relax. <laughs> okay, kid, so I'm nervous. After you've been in as long as I have been. Who are you, you talking to? Amateurs? You sure they ain't trying to buzz on you right now? I got a good hour ahead. We've got a good year ahead. You're looking up pink, Whit. Feel good. Been doing a little gardening around the house just for the exercise. Look, I cut my thumb. Did you um, meet any interesting dames in that country club? Oh, they all had beards. How about those lips I've been waiting for?
after the big heat's off on you, we head for the mountains. Lay low for a full month. Never mind me. Just how hard are you, Al? <laughs> the law's blind. They were looking for me for two years. I've been right here every minute at a time. You're safe here. It's a breeze. <laughs> I've been reading about you in the papers, Al. My last big haul? A pushover. Upstairs windows are never locked. I got myself a couple of handfuls of real ice in a big Bel Air mansion. I'm fencing them right tonight. We will be financed for a year. <laughs> you know, I used to know all the angles and all the double crosses. How old do you know this fence? How suspicious could you get in stir? I've done business with this guy 50 times. He's got to be right. Well, it's taken me a year to get here. I'd like to stay overnight at least. <laughs> You're safer hidden in church. I'll be back in two shakes of a cocktail mixer. With the olives. <laughs> I think I'll take a shower. Make yourself the hole. You got no business here. We know all about that, so open the door. I lost my key. So maybe you got somebody in there. Open up, will you? I got no key. I told you, I got no key. You got the stuff you want. Let's move on. You're a little too anxious, Al. I told you there's nobody here but the termites. Who's the extra bed for? I got a pet cat. Your pet cat just took a shower. Come on, kitty. Slow and easy. It might catch pneumonia. Take a good look at this mug. I think he's the answer to the hot broadcast. Fits the description. Dark curly hair, dark eyes, slight hop and bridge of nose, right height, weight. You're news, son. Hot news. Whittier himself. You got this guy all wrong. Oh, no, we got him all right. Your next stop, Mr. Honor Farm Whittier, is Folsom. That dick was telling me the truth, all right. The next stop was Folsom. The home of maximum security. The home of nightmares. If I had tried the wall, I'd be dead now. The row of machine gun bullets where my belt ought to be. Almost four years of it. I pounded that parole board with weeps. The folks needed me. If I had money troubles, Mom was sick. It were my responsibility. Any reasons I could think of to get out of there sooner. I was on the free side, but the old resentment against any authority was stronger than ever. Dependable doll, that's you. Wait, be careful. What have I been careless? I remember reading a story once about the wife of an air pilot. How whenever her man went out on a trip, she died a little until she heard that he'd landed. That's how I feel about you. I always land. And I always die a little. Mammy, you're getting sentimental. What do you want me to do? Sell shoes or gasoline? I wouldn't care what you sold. Now, wouldn't that be a dumb life? Big thrill of the week. Come home to a hamburger dinner with a blue ribbon from the boss for having sold more shoes during March than old man Tweedletooth. Sure, a dumb life. No kicks in it. I can be really stupid, can I? Look, baby, things get hot. We'll cash our chips and fly south. This will be a uh, clean-up year. Just a year? A year. There'll be no cheating, mister. Tomorrow, I buy a calendar. I want you to promise me, doll, whatever happens, any dough I can get to you, you'll buy Mom and Dad things. You know, you'll go see them, fix them up. Nothing but the best is going to happen to you from here in. But I promise anyway, I'll see them. Hmm. That'll be Monk and the boys. Well, the door's unlocked. He's still he's ringing. I want my chips out. You sure they're handpicked? The cream. They're what you ask for and more. Monk's known her for years. He wouldn't fool us. I wish I were out there. Out there. You won't see him for 20 years. Hello, Mom. 
huh? Hey, Muck! Hiya, pal! <laughs> Delivered as advertised. You know what I told you about my friends. They know all about you. How are Glad you? to know you. Nice to have so many questions and answers behind us. Muck says you got a patent on how to get rich quick. There are no exchanges. Well, it's no new technique, but it has a news link. Muck tells me you know all the better class joints in the county. Know them and been in them. Most of the runners for the syndicate and the rackets. See, those boys can be rough. They shoot straight. There's no copyright in shooting straight. I'm making it plain. I've got a few things around here I treasure. You're not using this apartment for a headquarters. I know a very old hideout will use it. All right, now, what's the, what's the full pitch? Hijack the hijackers. Sure, thieves like us against thieves like them. So I'm a fan. Nobody complains, nobody informs the police. Law don't bother us because we don't step on the law's toes, plain enough. I wish you'd talk about this when I'm not an earshot. The law's one thing, but racket runners, not for me. Whit, you're the only one I care about. Let me know what is in the remains. How's it sound? Thieves like us against thieves like them. That's okay by me. No, I'm already dead. But I'll go along just for the floor recheck. This is a deal. We warmed up by heisting the messengers who carried the dough for the horse racing and gambling syndicates. Side known voice pal. Big bills. Thanks. Johnny Albert's going to have 50 rods looking for you, cheap punks. You must be hopped up. Nah, no, just a little war between smart guys and smarter guys. The last is us. You better tell Johnny Albert to send 100 rods. They better be carrying machine guns. We're hard to catch. Turn this heap around, keep a gun in the seat. I'll do. Now, Mr. Do Re Mi, I guess. I suppose Joe sent you. No, but Mr. Johnny Albert suggested we drop by. Oh. Oh, Mr. Albert sent you. Oh, well, come in. Come in. We have to be careful, you know. And after all, you do look just a little like, well, rookie cops. That dear lady is the supreme insult. Oh, forgive me. <laughs> and call me Blanche. <laughs> now, were you interested in any particular game? Birds. Rare birds of paradise. A pheasant? Or a quail. Not the San Quentin kind. <laughs> I'll show you around. These are our hostesses. Name your game, they play them all. Do you like what you see? Do you like what you see? A gun. Correction, a loaded gun. Keep walking forward, Blanche, darling. Stop trembling. This can only hurt your pocketbook, or should I say Johnny Alberts. Okay, everybody, hands in sight. Look at that rod, Mug. Get it. Get it through right here. Hurry it up. What do you got here? Well, let's head over there. Come on, come on. Yo, come on. Give me that. I worked very hard for these rocks, you louse. Oh, work again, honey. You know practice makes perfect. Perfect. Come on, Blanche. Get the load up. We've got something to stash. Let's go. All right, now, cut it here. Let's go. Bye, Blanche. No 
Don't touch any buttons, Johnny. Okay, honey, you got over in this chair, easy and quick. Wipe your mouth, Johnny. Strictly business. You know what we're after. Three of you, huh? You paid a social call on Blanche, am I guessing right? You're the same hoods that held up the boys in my treasure bar last week. Cheap punks. We're not gonna be so cheap tonight, Johnny. I can smell the stink of the jail tank on all of you. Make you homesick? Okay, Johnny, on your feet. You're going along with us, and we'll take the doll to keep you company. Get rid of him, Johnny. I don't want to be tied up in no drafty basements. Well, we'll fix you up real nice, baby. Let me phone. Uh, don't kid us. Tomorrow you can use our phone. And tomorrow your lawyer can start getting a dough ready. We can talk business right here. How much dough are you asking? How much you think it's worth? I'll go 30 G's. Keep a slush fund for just such an emergency. 30 G's now, small bills. They're only gonna ask for 25. <laughs> well, do your favor, we'll take the 30. With no hard feelings. All right, we'll find it. We'll get it. The second drawer. For my collection. Naturally, I had no intention of trying that. Against three of you. Oh, no. Naturally, no intention. Duck soup, isn't it? You want to know? Brought down many a duck. Sorry for interrupting your party, Johnny. Must have been hooked up to that drawer we opened. Come on, we have... Johnny Albert and his mom. We're nuts if we go back to L.A. Every goon in town will be gunning for us. I just as soon I go picking buckshot out of my front teeth. How about it, Whit? Ride the Glendale, Monk. Yeah. Split it four ways thins it down, doesn't it? You sure you're not sore, Whit? Nah. We've had our kicks. Say for we split up. Australia, here I come. <laughs> it was Africa a while back. That ain't far enough anymore. Well, if you guys ditch this hot heap and scatter. I'm going to Canada. Any use asking you where you're heading with? Leaving California? I don't know. I'll find some mischief. You'll read about me in the papers. Cops, honey. Nothing to be scared of. Well, uh, this is a stick up. Uh, Mr. Listen, I, I only got a few bucks. Don't be out. You, you stay here, honey. Don't worry. Oh, oh let go of me, please. Let Keep go. move.
this is stick up. It's two o'clock. Aren't you glad to see me? No greedy. Where I... I... Look, I... You can't stay here. Just drop by. The see. police might... They've been here? No. No, but I'm afraid. Some guy's going to No. No, quit it. You're hurting me. Well, look, nobody's been here. Nobody's liable to come. What are you sweating about? What it, it's what's in the papers. Robbery is one thing, but this other, this red light bandit business. These girls. You don't leave everything you read in the paper. There's a drawing in the newspaper where it looks like you. The law thinks you're this guy. Uh, what do you think? Job again. Victim state of collapse. Bandit driving a Ford. Probably souped up. Look for this Ford. Dark coupe, late 1946 and 1947 model. Wanted man is a male Caucasian. Young, dark curly hair. Five feet six to five ten. Weighs 150 to 170 pounds. I sure wish that guy would pick on us. Four nights in these clothes. I wish they'd have picked you to wear this girdle. Hey, over there, that poop just pulling in for gas. Let's look it over. Spot. I got 11 years parole on me and then some. I'd rather get killed now than rotten false.
this red line thug we've been looking for used a 45. Victims swear it was a 45. Now let's count the score. Number one, the gun. Found near your car. Coincidence. 45s aren't rare. Victims of the red light bandit identify you. Look, I'm not even the size they claim, not even a weight. I've been misidentified, not identified. It happens all the time, and you know it. You call up the victim, you say, we got your bandit. His next con has already confessed. What can they do? Call a cop a liar? Number three, this pencil flash found in the glove compartment of your car. Well, there's one in every car. You can buy them in any drugstore. Number four, the car itself. A stolen car, description right, you driving it. Hundreds of cars of exactly the same description running all over the streets. Yeah, you got lots of excuses, but not much of a case. I say there was a third guy in a car. He's your red light bandit. He jumped out at the filling station. You sure? I'm sure. You say this third guy was riding in your car? Yes, he rode into the gas station with us, caught a flash of you, and jumped out the other side. You swear to this? Anytime. Well, you're the best help we've had. What's this third guy's name? What? I said, what's his third guy's name? Find out yourself. You're a cop. You lost him. I didn't. Okay. So now we've lost this third guy. Now we'll talk about you. Number five. You are a notorious police character, a notorious two-time loser. When the law wanted to question you, you made a fast run for it. Doesn't that look like you're guilty? Look, if I'd have stopped and been picked up with an ex-con and a car loaded with hot clothes, I'd have gone back to Folsom as a parole violator with new charges. Why wouldn't I run? Look, you're not going to burn me for those red light jobs. He's a girl beater. The sex fiend. Get him out of here. Want to leave him to us? We'll get rid of him. Turn off the lights for two minutes. We'll beef him. No extra charge for a broken head. Papers and the broadcasters had already convicted me of crimes that even these slobs hated. For five days, the police had rammed questions at me. Finally, I was turned over to the sheriff's custody. Yeah, Frank. What a bunch of pigs. My lawyer come yet? Take him to my office. Oh, this is going to be a party workout. Chains, nightsticks, kicks in the head. I've heard of it. Well, you two pit bulls aren't going to get away with it. You leave one mark on me and you'll regret it. I'll have every reporter in this Suppose state. you take it easy for a couple of minutes. What about my lawyer? I don't talk without my lawyer. He'll be here, but first I got something to tell you. Well, it better be good, because I heard the worst. No, I'm afraid not. Your mother died last night. That stopped me cold. I remember trying to say something, but no words came out. I hadn't been home in a long time. I didn't have enough nerve to face the folks anymore. Now Mom was gone. I never gave coppers any reason to be decent to me. I never gave any one of them credit for being kind till that day in the captain's office. Hey, look, what are your... There's been no formal charges against you yet. The DA's working on the list. I can give you a break. Don't put them back in the tank. I'll write you out an assignment to take them to the funeral parlor. I'd seen death before, but this was different. I remember thinking, Mom, if I could turn back a little time, if I could speak to you again, but your pain is over now, all the pain. And God knows I caused you plenty. I burned all the newspapers. She'd never knew.
道Sir, there's nothing like having a big shot lawyer. Big enough to rate a private interview in a captain's office. It has its advantages. Can you wait outside, please? Now I got the dough stashed. We can whip this red light, Rap. We can tie that DA and his five points of evidence into a knot. All this identification testimony's pure bunk, pure baloney. You know that, don't you? Here are the papers you sent me. Names of the alibi witnesses and so forth. You may want to hang on to them. Don't you need them? It's not going to be as easy as that, is it? It's going to be that easy for me. I wouldn't touch your money or your case if my life depended on it. Well, my life does. They're trying to gas me to the Lindbergh Law. Be sure and take a deep breath. Now, wait a minute. I hired you. I got the dough, I tell you. There's a limit even to what a criminal lawyer can stomach. You've been a vicious, dangerous man all of your life. You've abused every privilege of social justice. Now, wait a minute. I got rights. This is one of my rights. You haven't got a gun in your hand, and you've got to listen. You've robbed, wrecked, cheated. You've flaunted the laws of prisons and reform schools. You've peddled and fenced with the underworld. You've beaten innocent men, shocked forever the minds of young women. You tried to kill law officers. You may even have committed murder. But now they've got you on the little Lindbergh law. And it'll execute you. And good riddance. Nah, that stupid law. Just for holding a gun on somebody and moving a few feet, you call that kidnapping? They'll be executing men for plain robbery if they get away with this. Doesn't my life mean anything to you? Nothing. Since when has any life meant anything to you? You drove your mother to an early grave. You're killing your father by inches. And you blame everybody. Society, law, authority, poverty, and it's all a big lie. You're a living lie. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Please, please. You're my only hope. Get out of my way. I told them all I wasn't guilty. That I wasn't a red light bandit. But no one believed me. No one. What was I to do now? Are you represented by counsel? I wish to represent myself. You don't want to trust this to a lawyer? I don't. If you wish to try your own case, we can't tell you not to. Many times, men with past experience such as you've had, you know the tricks of the trade. They've come before me later with the excuse of their inability to prepare for defense. They wait to the last minute to get a lawyer and then have him ask for a continuance just to stall off the case. Now, do you really want to try your own case? That's correct. How do you plead? Not guilty. The case is set for trial on April the 29th, 1948. Well, it's about time. You must think we're running a law school around here. Uh, wouldn't harm any. You know I'm entitled to a couple of books. You're getting everything that you're entitled to. But don't you think you're running a good thing into the ground? No, I don't. My whole future. If there is any, is in these books. What's the matter with a public defender? He's fine. He's a nice old fella. He'll be around. For experience. But you think you're smarter, huh? Well, I got more at stake than he has. Look, is there any harm in a guy trying to find out what makes him tick? You were a young pup. Somebody wound you up with a crooked key. You've been running backward ever since. Yeah. It's not the way to win, is it? You ought to know. The day for my trial had been set, and my future was up to my own cleverness to twist the law to my advantage. I was alone fighting for my life. Only one man in the world had my total interest at heart. Only one man in the whole world would dedicate his life to save mine. The courtroom was another kind of jungle. 
the jungle of civilization where the intelligent battle to the death or to the acquittal. This was the arena. The weapons were books and speeches, evidence and witnesses, the recognized weapons of legal combat before a jury. I remember looking each one of them over carefully, these 12. They were all good, stout citizens, carefully selected for their lack of prejudice. I was the grand prize of this battle. A novice entering a bull ring could not have felt more uncertain than I. A brilliant talker. The prosecutor set the stage when he told the jury that he would prove I was the red light bandit and would prove 18 separate major felonies against me. Under the little Lindbergh law, he would demand capital punishment. The gas chamber. Witnesses, witnesses, identifying accusing, condemning me with gestures as well as words. As the case against me grew stronger by the hour and by the day, I looked in vain for one expression of sympathy, one ray of hope. I searched the faces of the jurors. And I looked for understanding and tolerance in the expressions of the men from the press. I saw nothing on those faces but scorn and contempt. Witnesses, witnesses, I couldn't shake their testimony. The jury listened to them, fascinated. I wondered if that old saying was right after all. I was my own lawyer. Had I a fool for a client? Prosecutor closed the Mason to jury just now. Said Whittier's alibis were just dribble. No alibi at all for the crime of the 17th and none for the 22nd. Oh, hold your horses. Yeah, I think so. He's downright depraved. Yeah, positive. Here it is, yeah, D.A. quote. To convict him of robbery is just like you going home. Doing time means nothing to him. Wait a sec, here's something to quote. Parole violator. Best your crimes. Morally wrong. Lawless, cold, calculating, vicious. Sure, he's a sadistic fiend. And the cinch for the gas route. OK, bye. Then it was my turn to address the jury. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You've heard the prosecutor. I say to you here that I'm not guilty of the crimes ascribed to the red light bandit. I say to you here I'm not the red light bandit. I swear I'm telling the truth. I'd like to point out that these crimes were committed by a bungling amateur. Prosecutor says I'm a long time hardened and professional criminal. Now, certainly a man of my experience wouldn't be nervous with a gun, as the witnesses said the attacker was. I'd like you to consider the descriptions broadcast by the police. Male Caucasian, smooth face, young, dark curly hair, dark eyes. Yeah, this could be me. But it could also be thousands of others. The description also said five foot six to five foot ten, weighs 150 to 170 pounds. Some of the victims reported the red light bandit talk with an accent. Does this description fit me? I'm over six feet tall, I weigh over 180. I talked for a day and a half, and in the end... The jury has found you guilty on 17 of the 18 charges, on two of which the penalty is death. Your Honor, aside from the automatic appeal to which I'm entitled, I move now for dismissal on the grounds of mistrial. As you know, the court reporter died two days ago before this trial ended. The law requires a proper transcript of trial testimony. I maintain it's impossible for another person to prepare from a dead reporter's shorthand notes a proper transcript of this trial. I shall take the motion under advisement. motion was denied. I argued that I was being unconstitutionally convicted. The double death sentence held. They brought me here to death row. 
Six years ago. Six years in death row. Six years in a living coffin. A coffin ten and a half feet long. Four and a half feet wide. My home. My office. Fighting the law with the law. Searching for legal miracles. Writs. Stays. Appeal after appeal. Four times to the Supreme Court of the United States. Hundreds of law books studied. Thousands of words written. Twice before now within hours of the gas chamber. I've already died 50 times. The night is gone. This is it. I can't show fear. But I am afraid. God in heaven, forgive me. It's been all my fault. I know now what brings a man to death row. Not society, not heredity, not environment. Only the man himself. I alone am to blame. You've done it again, Whit. No kidding. A stay from the state Supreme Court. <laughs> and I thought it was the bad news. Listen, did the judge make any comment when he granted the stay? Here. I took some notes over the phone. You'll be able to read the facts and the judge's opinion in the morning papers. Uh, time. That's all I need. Over 100 more days of life. Yeah, I got to start on my new brief right away. The reporters are downstairs. They want to see you. Yeah, my pleasure. Any time you say one. I'll call you. Witt filed his new brief, but the United States Supreme Court again refused to review his case. The date for his execution was once more set by the trial court. On January 11th, just three days before Witt was to die, the Chief Justice of the Circuit Court stayed the execution pending a hearing. So, the story of this man is not yet over, nor is the story of cell 2455 death row. Whether Witt descends to the gas chamber or whatever the future holds for him, cell 2455 still stands, ready and waiting for the next Whittier. <laughs>